we're now going to turn to a little bit of a different story. The AR-15. It's the weapon of choice for school shootings. It's been used in 11 out of 12 mass shootings in the past decade. And with students across the country participating in active shooter drills on the regular, gun control activists have now turned the heat on gun manufacturers. Just this past week, gun manufacturer Remington had to pay a settlement to the survivors of the Sandy Hook shooting. Remington was infamous for its get your man card marketing campaign aimed at young people. But an Illinois gun manufacturer is now doubling down on targeting this young demographic, bringing an AR-15 explicitly designed for children to the market. They're dubbing it the JR-15. Here are the stats. The JR, or Junior 15, is a 22 caliber semi-automatic assault rifle, about 20% smaller than the AR-15 and weighs only two and a half pounds, making it very easy to handle for children. And here's the kicker. The JR version comes with a logo of a skull and crossbones with a pacifier in its mouth. Joining us to discuss this is California president of the National African American Gun Owners Association and owner of Redstone Firearms, Jonathan Solomon. Jonathan, good of you to join us today. Guns, Thank you really for designed for one purpose. Now, guns are designed for one purpose, right? To kill and to maim. Why should that, any version of that, be in a child's hands? Well, unfortunately, I have to disagree with you on that statement um, because firearms are not just on for which part of it that that, that 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 guns are not designed to kill. No, that they're not just for the purpose of maiming and killing, um, because mm -hmm. unfortunately, the positive narrative of firearm ownership has not been spread the same way that the negative narrative has been spread. Um, un unfortunately, my wife and I and my family, we were victims of a home invasion robbery a few years back. And us being able to have firearms in our own home basically saved my kids' lives and my life as well. So that narrative that you said, it's not 100% correct. Um, that narrative can go for mm -hmm. a lot of other things. And but when it comes to the GR-15 that we're speaking on, um, very long story short, I started shooting when I was five years old. Um, that was a, a, a pastime that my grandfather started me on. I started on a 22 caliber, long rifle, single action, single shot. The JR-15 comes in a similar uh, configuration, which is it comes with a single round magazine and it is a semi-automatic um, rifle. It's a beginner rifle for children that are getting into the sports shooting foundation, um, i.e. competition shooting, and just all around having the ability to use that to, you know, connect with and educate with their parents, grandparents, etc. I, um, I find it very interesting that you found comfort and solace in having a gun in your home during a home invasion, especially considering what we were experiencing just this last week, the latest story, Amir Locke, who had a, a permit to have a gun in his house, lifted it up when police uh, invaded and he was killed, right? Stories of this over and over again about who is allowed to have guns and who is not, knowing, right, knowing that the challenge that black and brown people face and just basic Second Amendment rights why then try to extend that, that danger and that risk to children by giving and marketing an assault rifle to them? So it's not an assault rifle. Let's, let's, let's say that, okay? It is a single shot rifle, okay? It has one round in it, okay? And it, it is not an assault rifle. An assault rifle is... Okay. Pretty much something that so let's is not used to let's not get caught up. Someone. Let's yeah. I I, so I appreciate that you are absolutely which, the expert on what the gun is and isn't. So let me reframe the question because I don't want to go down that road of the semantics of how many bullets there are or not. When really it's about should children whose studies have shown do not have the developmental capability of making smart decisions, right? Up until their brains fully develop until the age of 25, should they, even in sportsman cap capacities, be marketed guns? Should guns be designed for children? 
Absolutely. I hear your question. Let me address that. It's not so much that this gun is marketed towards children because a child can't walk into a gun store and purchase this weapon. The parents have to purchase the weapon, just like any other weapon that you walk in and purchase. You got to do a background check. You got to go through a process. So a child who is six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old is not walking into a store and purchasing this weapon their own. So with that being said, if a parent chooses to teach their their child about firearm safety, this is a opportune way to do that because one, this weapon is designed for a, ch a child basically to learn how to handle a weapon properly, safely, and be educated on the proper net mechanisms of the firearm, okay? So yes, some studies show the opposite or adverse effects and other studies show uh, the positive effects. And I'm a, I am a, a, a living, breathing example of that. I grew up in South LA. I grew up in the middle of gang infested Los Angeles in the 80s. Firearms was a, a way for me. My f grandfather showed me how to use firearms to keep me out of trouble. That was a pastime that kept me out of trouble. I could be a statistic just like anyone else that grew up in the 80s in that gang infested area. I could be a gang member, but no. I was able to use firearms as a way of connecting with my grandfather who helped keep me out of trouble. This is nothing different. This is just a newer version of what I learned on. And quite frankly, all of my family members learned on. Mm -hmm. it, it is the right. It's, it's hard to move past the personal anecdotes and experiences and so much. So many of these things. And actually, my, my father's a sportsman. Been hunting for ages. I actually grew up with his rifle in my closet, which is a whole different story. Um, but I do, I'm struck by the fact that when we say things like, you know, we could be statistics, we walked away, I'm struck by the fact that thousands of children have not, right? And that 30% of, uh, there's been a 30% increase in gun deaths during the pandemic. So there's clearly something that's not working right now because, and, and guns are part of that, part of that equation. So is there for you and your family, what is then the sensible version of gun, uh, of gun control? So part of what you just said is correct. There has been an increase in gun deaths. But that's also contributed to the fact that we don't talk about mental illness in the black community like we should. So a weapon is just a tool for achieving whatever goal that you're trying to achieve with the mental health issues not being a, a, a attracted or I'm sorry, being at attacked when it comes to figuring out what we need to do. Now, when it comes to the second part of your question, quite frankly, education is key for not only children, but adults when it comes to firearms and quote unquote gun control. Education is the key, okay? My, my wife and I teach a class at our store and quite frankly, that class has been adopted by courts when it comes to teaching education and proper gun handling in order to help the community know what to do and what not to do when they come across firearms. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, I appreciate you joining us tonight, and I will leave it at this, that uh, the type of tool does make a difference. The kind of violence you can inflict with a knife is very different than a multi-magazine rifle. But thank you. Appreciate your experience and you sharing that with us tonight.